All right, so let's learn about the sinusoidal, sinusoidal approach of um, approximating acceleration and deceleration. So that's, that's the really popular approach that you'll see <coughs> excuse me, in industry and in software that you use. We approximate acceleration and deceleration using sinusoidal, sinusoidal shapes. What's really neat is, oops, wrong one. What's really neat is we quickly see how um, how useful sine and cosine are. These are really, really awesome functions and, and, and ratios or relationships we have in the real world. So let's just start by drawing the, drawing it out. I'm gonna draw this here. I'm gonna draw, let's see if I neatly I can make it. Sine, right, this is sine like that. Um, maybe I should actually erase this. So this is our sine function. And I'll, I'll put some annotations on here. And uh, we have our zero here. This is two pi. This is um, pi, one pi. This is pi over two. This is three pi over two. And this should be something you're familiar with from high school. Um, what we want to do now is look at the sinusoid shape and say, well, we got this function already. We have a nice sine function. Can we use regions of this sinusoidal shape to come up with our target? So I'm going to start with. Um, this first one that we talked about of acceleration. So this is time, and this is t zero to one. Now remember we had the linear one that we started with, but I drew in pink earlier, this is what an acceleration curve might look like. So take a peek at this and go, hey, where does this curve exist inside that sinusoid? And very quickly you go, hey Jim, check it out, it's right there, it's right there. Now if I can map this to t of zero, and if I can map this to t of 1, cool. I can steal that portion, use that portion of the sinusoid function to get this exact resu required result in a reasonable fashion. So what we want to do is we, wanna, we just want to do that mapping. So we map t of 0 to 1 to this region. And then if we do that, we come up with like a t prime, OK? A T prime that represents the pink line, right? That represents the nonlinear function. So if I calculate a T prime, what I'm actually doing is I'm modifying T in a nonlinear fashion. T is modifying nonlinear. I get to use my existing LERP. I don't need to rewrite LERP. So just like in the previous example, if I'm modifying t in a nonlinear fashion, that's OK. Once I get my t, then I use my nonlinearly modified t to use LERP. And once I have my t, I can map that, um, I can map that to my parametric functions to go from a to b. So I don't need to modify the t. I don't need to modify the LERP. I just need to calculate a t prime that is a nonlinear relationship to t. So in this case here, we can do it the long way, and I'll show you a shortcut after. So I want to calculate this t prime, and I'm going to use this t prime in my LERP. Now t still changes linearly, but I'm going to get this t prime that represents that pink line. It'll start out changing slowly, and then it'll get faster. So what we want to do is just do a, a ratio. So this is a sine function, so I'll, put, I'll start by putting sine here. And um, the first thing I'll do is, well, this range here, of two pi, ending at 2 pi to 3 pi over 2, well, I can calculate that difference by 2 pi minus 3 pi over 2 there. And that'll give me a range, right? That'll give me a difference. Now, if I multiply t by that, uh, when t is 0, I get nothing. When t is 1, I get the full range. And I, I also need to add the minimum point here. So plus 3 pi over 2. Did I get that right? Yeah. OK. So when t is 0, this whole front bit gets 0, and then I just get 3 pi over 2, which is what I wanted my pink lines up here. At, three, at t of 0, I get 3 pi over 2. I get that bottom of that function. The other thing I'll notice is that when t is 1, I get 2 pi minus 3 pi over 2 plus 3 pi over 2. I get 2 pi. So when t is 1, I get the right end. So what I've done is, as I change t from 0 to 1, I'm going to go from the angle 3 pi over 2 all the way to 2 pi. 
Now, if you're paying attention, you might also notice another problem here. And the other problem is, this is negative. Right? And we need a positive number. So we can just bring this up by adding 1. Since we know that this is a minus 1 here and a 0, we add 1 to it, and it'll give us a new function. So we add 1. OK, so that's a long a bit of a mess. But I hope the intuition is there. We just want to grab a chunk of the sinusoid and map it um, to our, and use it as our function to map our t. So in this case here, what we're getting is, since I'm, we're going to get this, you know, when t is 0, I'm going to get the left-hand point of that box, the, um, that box there. I wish I could point without drawing. That was a mistake. So when t is 0, I get the bottom left corner of that pink box. So it's down here. This is time. Oops. This should be um, t. And this is t prime. So when t is 0, I get the bottom there. And then I'm going to get this function just like that, stealing just from that uh, pink box, which goes from 0 to 1. So I get this t prime from t that gives me this nonlinear relationship. Awesome. So it works really well. So this maps our linear t to the nonlinear t prime. Cool. Now, this is a bit messy. And as I work through these examples, I'm going to start just jumping ahead to the simplification. But if you look at these, these functions and realize we have sine and cos in different regions, there's actually simplifications just to make the, co the code a little cleaner. And I'm not going to really go through it because I think once I show you, it'll be obvious. But it might not be obvious if I don't show you. So instead of drawing sine, I'm going to draw cos. Now remember, cosine starts from 1 to negative 1 all the way back to 1. Okay, That's cos. Now I'm going to use the function of t prime equals. I'm going to do something about cos. The first thing to note about um, this is, I'm going to tell you now, I'm going to take this first region here. I'm going to use this region. So I'm actually going to go from 0 to pi over 2 instead of this later region. But you're going to say, wait, 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 Jim. It's backwards. It starts at the top. I want to start at the bottom, right? So what we do is, we take this region. We go, hey, Jim, if I do 1 minus this region, I'm going to get a shape like that. Hey, look, that's what I want. Okay. So then I'm going to do 1 minus cos function. To take that and flip it, if I do 1 minus, it'll just flip it that way. And then I'm going to do t times, well, I don't have a, a funny range like above, a minus and a max. I'm just going to go from 0 to pi over 2. So I don't need 0 and plus 0 and all that garbage. I just do two, uh, t times pi over 2, like that. So it turns out that this, this little nice simpler function I just drew for you, this is identical to this. They're equal. OK, you'll get the same result. Um, it just it's a lot cleaner, a lot nicer, and perhaps easier to understand. Now, this is called. This is called an oops, I want to be in black an ease in. This is called an ease in. Let's just, just do this all over. OK, an ease in um, interpolation. And the reason for that is it slowly speeds up, it accelerates, it doesn't just start, it eases into the motion, and that's it, and then it keeps going. Okay, it doesn't ease out, it just eases in. This is our ease in um, interpolation. And just to drive the point home, okay, just to drive the point home, note, when you look at this function I'm making here, we should just realize, okay, what's, 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 what's going on here, okay? Um, it takes a t from 0 to 1. So it takes a t from 0 to 1 in the same time as it did before. Okay, So if I go up to my earlier functions, we still take t from 0 to 1 over the same time. So if it's 10 seconds before, where am I? If it's 10 seconds before, it's still 10 seconds now. Okay, But the beginning goes slower. 
the end goes faster. So if I draw out the same diagram, my t goes from 0 to 1, just to shape my t prime actually in time. So previously when I had t, it goes, let's say, time t, it'll get there in that much time, however many steps you want. What I've done with t prime is I've gotten to the same spot in the same amount of time, except that's an ease, that's the wrong one. I've gotten to the same spot in the same amount of time, except that the at the beginning, I'm going much slower. At t of 0 0.5, look, I'm barely halfway there, whereas previously, I'm, I'm really fast. But you end up going faster. So this way, you start slower and end faster than the linear, but the average time is the same, so I end up in the same spot at the same time. So this is why it works for keyframing. As long as I end up at the same spot at the same t, when t is 1, I get there, it took just as long, then you can splice them together very nicely and go between uh, keyframes. So let's, let's demo this. Demo number 9. Okay. So this is my, the code I'll be using to show the different kinds of um, functions. And it's the same as earlier, where we still have a, the number of steps. Um, current keyframe, of course, we go between keyframes. We still keep track of our steps, and we calculate how many steps we need because of the distance. That's all the same as before. We're not doing this manual acceleration mess. We have a number of steps. We recalculate those. I take me 100 steps to get here to maintain my speed. We still do all of that. Now, the difference is, instead of just calculating my t like before, so before I'll just calculate my t as my current step over the steps, linear from 0 to 1. Now what I do is I calculate a t prime, which uses the function I just showed you. So if I'm going to be using a linear function, my t prime becomes t. That's it. If I'm going to use my ease in function, I'm going to use the one I showed on my slide, 1 minus cos t. And I'm going to scroll past the rest, and you see that I just now use this t prime in my lerp function. So I don't have to change lerp. Lerp is still linear, but their t prime is a nonlinear change in t. Okay, so everything stays the same. All I have to do is use a t prime, which uses the function I showed you. So let's see how this looks. So linear should look familiar. Here's linear, change, change, that rigidness. I'm going to click, and now we're doing ease in. Watch this. Stop, ease in. Stop, ease in, stop, ease in, ease in. So we get this. It's, it looks actually quite nice when it starts, but the stop is still really jarring. Okay, It still has a sudden stop, so we need, we need to fix that. So we have an ease in, which works twice, but we still have a sudden stop. So we need to fix that. All right, so now's a good time to stop. Let's come back and learn a bit more about using sinusoidal functions to fix this problem we have.